Wizard Foo here. Another game development tidbit video. Here's another snack, another morsel for you in your game development smorgasbord. So, um, I'm trying to fix this voxel engine issue where there's, there's this erase issue, and I found the solution to something else. So let's check this out. Um, here's the issue, right? Or was the issue? Was it check out? Check out that these cyan colored bounding boxes, these rectangles that are semi-transparent, sort of bluish, aqua-ish color, right? Uh, as I move from one frame to another, we're going from one animate call to another. So the, the game has had time to render out its stuff, it updates the screen, so um, this is what we see, right? What's the problem here is that check out Jib's bounding box. Jib's bounding box is not even all the way covering him up. There's a good three pixels, and there should be five, where that that blue rectangle should be over him and stretched with the margin of two pixels as well. And it continues on. As you were moving, see how it's always off by a little bit whenever, whenever the character is moving. And that applies not only to Jib, but also to Rock uh, in certain circumstances. I'm not sure if we can see it happening exactly, but anyways, this is quite an issue for multiple reasons. Number one, it's annoying as hell, right? It just looks bad. You, everything is a little bit behind. There's some kind of lag going on here, and it's just like, how would this feel as a player? Horrible. How does this feel as a player? Horrible. How does this look as a, an observer of you know, game development? It also looks horrible. And the other big reason why this is a bad thing is that those those little um, the indicators in the top left the FPS 17 especially the current tick which is currently 1066 that is probably wrong right if the blue the blue boxes are being rendered on top of all the voxels so they get rendered immediately the voxels are lagging behind in this case and so basically if I'm trying to debug this and I'm trying to see that oh at tick 1066 I see that uh, Jib's voxels have messed up and he's leaving behind a pink trail of nothingness um, I might uh, it's just I'm, I'm trying to base my assumptions off of incorrect data that's like that's messing with uh, my head there trying to figure out how oh this is happening at this tick and how many anime ticks are going by all that data is not in sync so let's look at these the uh, um, the fixed version here this is now I have this fixed we'll look at the code here in a second but let's just step back through all this see how Jib is doing the, kind of the same motion as we were seeing just a second ago we'll step forward in time now I'm stepping forward by a frame here and there we can see that Jib's Jib's outline is always surrounding him nice and perfectly we've got everything in sync now especially when it comes to about like there this is when you would definitely have seen an issue because Jib is moving in this frame to the left by three or four pixels per frame and his box would have been also three or four more pixels there to the left so see as we were going through all this stepping through every single one of these frames always the box is nice and around him still we have that pink issue I'm trying to fix that but anyways, this is a this is one step actually towards fixing that pink issue because now I actually have some good data to work off of. And I can see that oh, it's it ticks 651. We have this going on exactly, and uh, also it's um, it looks a lot better and feels a lot better to play with this in sync. So let's take a look at the code. What that was to fix it was really just gaining more understanding on the pixel buffer object. Uh, and how that works. So um, I'll go into just a little bit of a review of how the pixel buffer works. Basically, um, I've got a draw node with it, which is basically just a, a sprite node, um, and that is is using the texture from this. This is my own custom texture class. It's called so basically I can create a texture in RAM, and then uh, I can also create a texture or a version of it that's also on the GPU. So this right here, text screen, is on the GPU only. And it's just a texture that represents the size of the screen 
um, in pixels, so it's a tiny little buffer. And then we've also got this one, which is text arena. Arena is the entire arena's worth of pixels, and it is in RAM only. It's never on the GPU. And then the draw node is basically just used to transfer uh, from the text arena into the text screen, which is the text screen is basically the draw node, which is also basically the draw sprite. All the all these things are the same thing, basically. So um, what happens is that when when it's done like rendering up all its voxels into text arena, then it goes and copies the current screen from from text arena into text screen. And then um, and that but that what that has to do is it has to transfer to the GPU. Because we're transferring from the CPU to the GPU. And um, to do that efficiently you use what's called a pixel buffer object. A pixel buffer object is basically just something that uh, makes it so OpenGL can say, all right, I've already got this data, or it can asynchronously transfer data from um, from RAM, from your CPU, onto the GPU. Or Basically, you're putting things into the pixel buffer object first, and the pixel buffer object can, t can like, synchronously transfer it onto the GPU as, or asynchronously transfer it onto the GPU at when it can. So, um, let's look at what the problem was before this is the uh, this little synchronous there. So um, I've got what's called voxel end paint and begin paint. And before this was actually on render command, which was running running this after like first it would run all of my tick and all of my game systems, and then it would transfer stuff to Coco Studio X where it did, did its render commands on render command was just a way to hook into those render commands and then perform the actions necessary. But with these, we do not need to be doing in the on render command. In fact, they can be done as soon as they're done. So now, as soon as all the voxels are done rendering, all the everything has been transferred into the text arena, it, we call it voxel end paint. And this is what it used to be doing, right? This is the method it used to do, where it would use two pixel buffer objects, the first one and then the next one, whatever the next one is, and uh, first, it would asynchronously transfer its data from the last pixel buffer object that was used last animate. And then it would update the newest buffer, right? And what this is meant to do is, the, the reasoning behind this is that so you can, you can take advantage of this asynchronous transfer. You can be updating a buffer while you're also, which is in, which is basically mostly in RAM. This is CPU work. And then, uh, while you're doing that same thing, you can be asynchronously sending the old buffer to the GPU. But the obvious issue there now, which is obvious now, wasn't obvious before, was that that is causing a one frame delay. So it has to be, it's sending the old pixel buffer object, right? And since we're using such a small buffer anyway, this is a pixel art game. It's 420 by 240-ish, depending on your design resolution or the resolution of your monitor and all that we don't really need to worry too much about it in fact we can do this whole synchronous update buffer um, and then just go ahead and send the buffer and we're doing this in, in voxel and paint uh, instead of doing it in voxel on render command and that allows time for that to happen anyway so basically by the time the uh, the on render commands are actually run and all the data is transferred into the frame buffers, there's two of those, um, then it, all everything, all the rendering can happen in just one frame. Everything happens synchronously. And I measured all the performance. I actually measured three different trace, actually four different traces, two from before, two from after, and we've got exactly the same, um, exactly the same performance. So this is really not hurting anything at all. And we've got synchronous visuals that look really good. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.